back up. It's time for inning number two here. So praise God. Be a great day today. Praise God. Hey, we have uh, every week we have a couple parts of our uh, message. We have a testimony time. So this is an important thing that it's important for us to testify what the Lord's done. Have you, have you ever given something to somebody and then they're like, they don't even say thank you. They just take it and walk away. You know, most people don't. Most people say thank you. And so when we want to testify what, what God is doing, you know, there's a lot of things that happen in your life that we want to hear, but that you want to hear too. And that God wants, needs to be glorified in because we, we don't have anything of ourselves. I didn't save myself. Jesus saved me. Amen. And, and in the church, in the church setting, we need to, to rally around rejoicing in the Lord and appreciate and giving thanks and glory for what he's done. Amen. It's important. What that does, it causes more to come to you, right? It causes more good things to come your way. It's, you're like just a, a blessing magnet. Amen. Or just like a protection magnet. Or just like a good stuff magnet. Or you're a blessing to other people magnet. Amen? Yeah. And you just start to get in that cycle of it. You know? It's a wonderful cycle to be in. That just being thankful, being grateful to God that he's so good. He's outpouring things in your life. And so every week we want to just encourage people in the sense that, that the word of God is working in your life. It's working in your life. I'm not just up here standing to have a nice... Uh, Nice song and dance here for you that, oh, wasn't it a nice message? God bless him. He had a funny story today. He had a funny comment, you know. I don't know where he comes up with this stuff. Steve's always talking to me all the time about how hilarious I am, that all the funny things he says is just amazing. I'm like, no, that's it's all the Lord, brother, all the Lord. It's, I'm razzing him on that. And so it's only the Lord. The Lord get the Lord the Lord enriches us. We don't we're not here just to have something fun or have something to do. And I know that you're here because you're interested in Jesus. Amen. You want to be touched from God. You want to be touched from heaven. And so people's lives need a real change today. Amen. They need the change of the Holy Ghost and fire. They need the change of the Word of God. They need the change of the goodness of God. There ain't no goodness except the goodness of Jesus. Amen. You could have a good you could have a good set of flapjacks for breakfast in the morning, some good New York maple syrup, and that'd be sure as good. And but you can have the goodness of the Lord and it's gonna change your life. Amen. It does something on the inside of you that'll fill you up not like nothing else will. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we have a testimony time here. Uh, Miss Deborah has got a little testimony for us here. She had about she had a truckload of them. Come on down. <laughs> She had a truckload. She gave a few for our pre-service prayer today. I said, well, take one that's like the, the best one, uh, you know, the gravy, and then just give us that. Hit us with that today. So, praise God. Good morning, everyone. Um, my testimony today is about provision and um, protection. And so, um, and we all need that in our lives. We need provision and we need protection. And so, my testimony today is um, kind of wild. So I was on my lawnmower and I was mowing my grass and uh, and I'm mowing and I'm going down uh, a lane. It's real nice and peaceful. It's like a, a quick lane down our farm. We have a farm and uh, it's it's like a lane and I enjoy just kind of riding out there and having the peace, you know, of God, the yeah. birds singing and everything's all beautiful. Yeah. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm driving along in my lawnmower yeah. and all of a sudden out of just nowhere this deer comes flying out at me and like this close to like hitting me and wow. I'm like <laughs> like just sitting stunned like oh my gosh like I almost just like got taken out by a deer like on a lawnmower you know and I'm thinking about it and, and no it wasn't John Deere but it was John Deere. <laughs> <laughs> been killed yeah. like by this deer yeah. like it was just that close to me if I had been just a few seconds more that thing would have it, you know taken wow. me out and I'm like wow what would have happened you know like I could have been literally killed over this you know and so you know I'm I'm mowing everything and then we have to run to work so I'm like hurrying up getting off um, the lawnmower and I'm getting things ready we got to eat we eat we eat we jump in the car to get ready for work and I get in the car and I'm in the car and I got my phone on me. I'm like, okay, I'm just sitting there and Ed's listening to some radio show. And all of a sudden, I'm like, the guy goes, you know, call this number, you know, you can win or whatever. So whatever, I just, I got my phone in my hand. I just start dialing, you know? And um, I I dial and and it's like, you're caller number six. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm caller number six. So I hung up real quick. 
I dialed again and then didn't get anything. And then I dialed back and they're like, are you feeling lucky today? You know what I'm thinking? I just almost got hit by a dare, you know, but I'm feeling lucky today. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am. I'm feeling lucky today. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm like, yeah, I feel like, and he's like, you're caller number 10 and you know, you've won. And I, like, the funniest thing is I had no idea what I won. And I was like, you know, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is hilarious. I didn't know what I won. And so I get off the phone with him. I give my, my information. I ask my husband, what did I win? And you know, he goes, you won a gas card for $50. And I'm like, oh, awesome. So we won $50 in cash, you know? But I want to talk about, like real quickly with my testimony, there's um, the provision and the protection I have been secretly given to people and like in this, like I just can't stop. I don't know what's going on. It's just like this, you know, I just gotta keep giving, you know? And it's like this this like train that's like, I just keep giving and giving and yeah. giving, secret giving. You know, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, doing it when nobody knows or you don't know that, you know, and um, it's being done in secret and, um, and then they get surprised. And so I feel like, you know, that's like the, the, like it's just coming back to me. You know, it's like there's a, 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 a God-given principle if you sow and you reap and, yeah. you know, but as I was sitting here thinking of, about, you know, my testimony, I was thinking God was saying the endless bowl. Like we all love the endless, you know, bowl or drink that, you know, oh yeah, you can go up for more, you know, just like keep going, you know, you refill before you leave the restaurant again because it's endless, you know, you can take it with you, you know, and fill yeah. back up, you know. And I was like, it's the endless well, it's like endless. Like like you give and you just like it just keeps coming. It's like reciprocated and you're just like, wow, oh, you just literally cannot outgive God and he loves us yeah. so much. Yeah. And then I was thinking about his protection and I'm thinking like a kid, you know, when you're going out and a kid runs out in a road and real quick and is gonna get hurt, you know, the father, you know, goes to like run after its child to protect it. And I felt like, you know, God was saying, you know, I protect you. Yeah. I watch oh, over yeah. you. And this yeah. isn't the first time. This is multiple yeah. times that I've literally had God's hand upon me, protecting me from an outcome that would, it could have taken me out or taken my life uh, several times. But God's protection because he loves us so much and because you glorify him in everything that you do and everything that, you know, he protects you, he's with you, and he watches over you. Lord. Give her a round of applause. Let's thank God for that too. Amen. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you for the boldness to share. That's good. Yeah, amen. So I know every year a lot of people pray for that divine protection. We pray for Psalm 91 for you guys. Divine protection. Amen. It's, it's important for us to place ourselves in his care as well. It says he dwells in the secret place of the most high. Amen. We're dwelling with God, walking with him. It's a little easier to listen to what he's saying when we're dwelling with him, right? Yeah. And so, praise God. Isn't that good? Divine provision, Amen. divine protection, yeah. and yeah. divine blessing of uh, outflow of blessing to other people. Yeah. We call you Secret Santa. Yeah. Amen. Oh, so maybe bless, bless, bless Deborah. Yeah. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. That's so awesome. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Lord, for his good. He's working in your life, isn't he? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Say, he's working in my life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. So, hey, we're going to talk just for a second about outreach as well. We always want to touch base on outreach community, outreach update. And so we've been doing the community business blessing every week uh, here recently. And we have been doing it all along, sometimes it's monthly, sometimes every couple of weeks. Going to local businesses, giving them a little bag of candy, invite card, Billy Graham gospel message in there, pen, church pen. And a lot of it. So just going, I went to several businesses this week as well. And people are blessed. You know, they're blessed. Uh, uh, sometimes they'll have a conversation, sometimes they're in the middle of their business day, so we're just kind of giving them a blessing to say, hey, God bless you, we're praying for the success of your business, and some people are overjoyed, some people are looking at you with bewilderment, some people are like shocked, some people are like, oh, okay, cool, you know, but you know what, it's it's uh, a seed planted of the Word of God. Jesus said, he, he said he compelled people to go into highways and byways, to bring the people in, and so we feel in our heart that God is saying, go out to where the people are at. Go out to, to these businesses that wouldn't maybe darken the door of a, a church ever in their life. But thank God that some of these people, they will as a result because they're being connected with Jesus. Amen? And so we're doing that weekly. We're getting the word out to, to Buffalo in that measure and that, that way. But then next week, like we mentioned, Reverend Jim and Stephanie Montgomery uh, coming out as well. They're going to teach uh, uh, on Sunday morning. They're going to teach on Wednesday night as well of a, a message update on things in the world, things that they 
they're connected with, their partners, Israel, and other places like that. What God's doing today in those places. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a fun time and a prayer service. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a great a great time. And then they're going to be here, like we said, to, to you know direct people in evangelism and to show people and how to connect with people. You don't have to be somebody you, you're not. There's a step you have to take, right? If you if you start off in first grade in school, you got to start off in first grade, go through 12th grade. You don't know what you know until you hit 12th grade, right? But year by year, you take a step. So just be around the things of God. I love what Jesus said. He said to when he called the disciples, he said, "Come and come, and I will make you become fishers of men." All you've got to do is be with Jesus. And then the, 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 even the Pharisees said, or the people that were with the Pharisees, they said after they said, "Truly, these people were with Jesus." And so they knew something was on them. The goodness of God was upon them. So you hang out with the people of God, the goodness of God's going to come upon you. Amen. It's going to start to get, make you the best apprentice you can be, right? The apprentice of a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. So praise God. Hey, let's go ahead and stand up for a second here. We're going to go ahead and pray over the word of God today as we uh, jump into the message. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that you're so good and your mercy endures forever. Oh, we love you, Lord. We thank you, Father God. We receive your word today, Father. Oh, we thank you, thank you, thank you. We can't thank you enough, Father. We can thank you in the morning, in the noontime, in the afternoon, in the evening time, Father. The more we give thanks, the more we are aware of you. And so we thank you, Father, you're moving, you're working. What does is, what is moving mean? It means you're touching people's hearts. You're changing people's eyes. You're lifting, you said that, that you said, come unto me, all you that are burdened and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So thank you, Lord. You give you give us rest. We thank you that you're the joy of our hearts. You're the peace that passes understanding. You're the good shepherd. You're good. And you've only got good. Oh, Lord, who wouldn't want to be with you? Who wouldn't want to be in your presence? Who wouldn't want to walk and talk with you? Lord, I know I would. And so, Father, and I do. And so thank you, Father. We do the going, we do the doing, and you do the, you do the being with us. And so thank you, Lord, you're in us. Because in you we live and move and have our being. Oh, hallelujah. In you we live and move and have our being. We're not dead and just getting by. No, we're, we're living. We're moving and having our being in Jesus' name. And so thank you, Father God, that today we declare that we're today we're going to be taught and instructed. And we're going to never, ever be the same. We pray that we have eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to receive. We pray, pray Father God, for the anointing upon the word. We thank you the word of God is already anointed. We thank you, Father God, that we pray that people's ears would be open to hear, to receive by the eye, ears of their heart, Father. Let their eyes to see bigger than they've seen before. Let them uh, conceive things that you've got for them. Drop things on the inside of them. Come and sit alongside them. Light their, lo their robe on fire for Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. So praise God. Hey, we are, we are ex excited that you're here today. You know, this is going to be the best day of the week that you've ever had. Amen. You might have had a great week. It might have been the best week. You might have been like a kid at Darien Lake. You had a, a limitless past just going through the uh, the rides all week long and had the best year, day of your life, week of your life. But this is going to be the best day you've ever had. Why is that? Because you're going to receive the Word of God today. It's going to change your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So we expect that, that as you're coming today, there's change. There's impact that's being made. Hallelujah. I'm excited. You're excited. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we're talking about the blessing series here. This is part number five. And so th we've been off and on on this as we've had other things to minister on. Uh, and other times like our baptism service last week. Wasn't that a lot of fun? Didn't you love that? Thank you guys for participating in the baptism service. Wasn't that amazing? They took the plunge. Amen for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Such a fun time. Such a great celebration. I loved it. I loved it so much. And so it's it's. I love uh, I love how big the Lord is. You know, He's when you start to walk with God, He starts to expand what you see, and you start to expand what you know, and you start to expand who you know. Amen. I know the more years that I've walked with God, the more people I've met. We know people all over the place, and the more you're with Him, the more He's going to press you forward to do more. The more you're going to want to do because you have a greater capacity inside you. It's like He takes the the, the tweezers and opens up. You ever see that game operation? You took, you put the little tweezers down and try to get it without buzzing the side. I'm going to get the rib out. I'm going to get the heart here. I'm going to adjust that. Such an annoying thing, especially you hear your sister playing. Your brother does it on purpose. Stop already. Quit it. And so you just want to throw it across the room. And so with, with, with that, God wants to do an operation inside you. Amen. He wants to put things inside of you, take things out of you. And that's when we come to church that he's doing a work inside of our lives. Amen. 
And so uh, I love to see as far as just a little bit about uh, the purpose of giving, the purpose of wealth, the purpose of blessing is like you're saying. See, so you can be a blessing. Amen. Amen. It's good to have what you can, you have. Maybe you got an old sock you want to get. Well, if you do, make sure you wash it real nice, like you know, before you're going to give it. Amen. Maybe you got a tie you wore a couple times. You bless bless somebody with it. That's going to be a blessing to somebody. Amen. Amen. So we blessed with what we have, but thank God, God wants more, so you can do more and be more of a blessing. Amen. It sounds good to me. Don't you like? Don't you like it when someone blesses you real good? Amen. You know. Amen. It's, it's good when somebody buys me a, a, a pack of fries at McDonald's, but it's better yet when somebody gets you a filet mignon. Amen? And so God wants to bless you with good things because he's a good father. He's got good stuff for us. And so I just want to expand your vision. Really, we want to pour into your heart the vision that God's got inside of us. His vision is a big vision. His plan for you is a bigger plan than you ever realized. If you want to walk with it and you want to go with it, you're going to be amazed at what you're going to see in it. And so we've got a couple slides here just about the uh, about our friends. We have some friends that are, um, they travel all over the world. This is Reverend uh, John and uh, Martine Smithwick. But they have these festivals they do. Uh, they do these outreaches, these, these places where they preach Jesus and these big, and we've seen pictures of these before, I know. But these are called crusades. Or they're called gospel meetings. They call them different things in different parts of the world because some parts of the world aren't friendly to these type of meetings, right? And so they kind of have to go undercover to look at, like festivals and stuff like that, they'll call it. And so people are just like, hey, what are you trying to do here, you know? Jesus, you know? And so, so they're preaching the Lord here to a huge crowd. I mean, they've had crowds of tens and thousands, you know, tens and tens and tens of thousands. That's a lot of people that just come to hear Jesus. And people are receiving the Lord as their Lord and Savior. That they're coming from all over the place. I don't know where this is at. Maybe India or Africa. One of their places they've been to. And so they, they travel all over the world to do these meetings. Uh, to get the good news of the gospel that Jesus is Lord to people. People are healed. They throw away wheelchairs, crutches. Uh, different problems they have. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears open. The Lord is still the same. Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. And so this is one, one meeting. And just want to show you this is what money does. Amen. This is what finances do to finance the gospel. We're here to finance the gospel of Jesus Christ. We sow into their ministry. On occasion, we've given to their, their ministry. We'll do it again. Amen. And we have friends, uh, Joel and April, that traveled with them as well. They were here last year. And they traveled with them and did uh, crusades like this in other towns. So they'd like going with a team of people. They would go out and do outreach in the daytime, invite people to the meetings at night. They'd go to schools and, and minister to the kids in schools. And so these, they go in the daytime like they did here. That's Brother John in the middle. Uh, he'd go to schools and stuff like that. They'd go out in the streets. And this looks like it's a Buddhist monk guy he's meeting with. Uh, they go to Thailand, different parts of Asia to minister to people. And just to see that God demonstrated in people's lives. And the next one we have as well. And so amazing, interesting people of the world. I mean, there's people all over the world that have that, you know, we're really such a minority in, in the United States. Yeah. The, the world is a very big world. I don't know if you realize that. It's a big, big world. India's got over a billion people. China's got over a billion people. The United States has 340,000 people, 340 million people. 340 million people, that is, a plus side of that. So nowhere near a billion. But, I mean, just think of there's so many more people out there yeah. that, that need, many, many, many need Jesus. And so uh, they just took some pictures of different people that they have out there. And that's, that's good, this one here. And so this is another crusade out there just to see so many people just flooding the field, just coming because they're, they, for one, it's like the uh, announcement of, oh, wow, there's something happening in my community today. There's yeah. something I hear. And people would hear of... Uh, hear all the way down though the speakers on and they'll hear way down in another village or someone will say this person got healed and they'll tell them in their village and then they'll come and walk the whole day to come and get to the church there isn't that amazing they walk all day to, just to get to church two days three days just to get to church they're healed their lives are changed and turned around and so this is happening around the world amen, amen. guess what this is happening in buffalo why why is that because we can have what we say yes. people are being interested in jesus yes. today People are being interested in hearing Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They may have all the entrapments of the world. Their, yeah. their stuff that they have that they want to substitute for having their whole filled, their holes filled with, with, uh, with everything else but Jesus. Yeah. But we want our heart filled with Jesus because yeah. that's all that matters. Yeah. And you here are disciples of the Lord to be raised up to go in all the world. Amen. Amen. And so also we have another one of Buenos Aires here as well. 
So this is what I would see in Buenos Aires when I was there, Argentina, South America, that I would go to the top of like a 30 story building and you just see for miles, miles. So it would be piso numero 30, 30. So that's the floor number 30 in Espanol. So on the top floor of the building, you can see for many miles out there. It's just amazing to see a city of 14 million people. That's a lot of folk, that's a lot of folk. Amen, it's 1.6 million here with surrounding region of Buffalo in Niagara County. And so uh, there's a lot of people to be reached, amen? And so you're here to help to get that gospel machine to go, amen? amen. Say, I'm here to help. And in Jesus' name, hallelujah. And I'll say this too, that, you know, you might have come out of different denominational settings or, you know, you don't hear a thousand people shout amen. Or you might have never been to church before until two years ago, ten years ago, whatever. But when you say, you know, saying amen, it's, it's saying I agree with it. It's saying so be it. And there's something about this pull on what God has for, for you in, in the service, amen. amen. That, that it's just like you're saying, I can't wait to have it. That's good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm agreeing with it. I'm involving myself in the sermon. Don't worry. It's not going to bother me. This is what we do as a Pentecostal church. Amen. Pentecostal, non-denominational church. Amen. A church that says, glory to God. Hallelujah. I receive it. Praise the Lord. That's good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. It's okay to have it because it, what it, does, it stirs up your spirit. It's causing you to step out of the place of not just thinking about something and drifting off and you're thinking of, oh, there's the sunset. I wonder what, if I can have some tacos later on with my friend at sunset today. You know, suddenly you're gone on another a vacation mentally somewhere else. No, but the Lord wants to involve you in what he's doing. When, you, when you're speaking, he speaks. He, he created us as creatures that are speaking. Speaking creatures, amen? You're a creature, and you can be a lovely creature if you speak Jesus, amen? amen. And so he wants you to start to, that's what he does. He said, it's Christianity is called the great confession. And beyond that, there's many confessions. All day long, we need to be speaking who we are in Christ. Because if you're not speaking, someone else is um, filling your life with words, amen? I like to listen to teaching, but I want to hear, sometimes I've got to shut it off and i got to just start speaking. i got to just start saying, I've got to start giving thanks to the Lord. i got to start praying in the Spirit of God, amen? Because it starts to, it involves my spirit, amen? My ears and my spirit start to speak and start to hear, but I need to pull on what's being said. And so I'll be listening to a teaching and I'll be like, glory to God, hallelujah, amen, that's good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I can't tell half the time if you have your earbuds in. You have the hair over the earbuds. Yeah. I'm like, are you talking to somebody? Are you listening yeah. to something right now? I don't know. And so you never know if you're interrupting a conversation or a, 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 a teaching, you know, until I hear her talk. And so but we're always, always receiving and always speaking out. That's the plan of God for you. Yeah. This is who you are as a Christian. Welcome aboard Christian life. Amen. Yeah. And so we don't want when the minister starts to come and you just, if we just sit there, well, I got a piece of hay between my teeth. I didn't get out there since last week there. I'm going to go there and watch the cows out there at sunset today. It's going to be a real nice sunset. What do you think, Jim? Mm, yeah, it's going to be good. Hallelujah. No, but God wants you to be stirred up. You be stirred up and lively. Hallelujah. Jesus has got a stirring of liveliness on the inside. I don't care if there's 10, 15 people here today. We want to feed you with the best of the hay. Hallelujah. If you came to receive it, then you're going to get it. If you didn't come to get it, then you're not going to get it. Hallelujah. But guess what? When you come to be fed, that's where that's where the lady, that's where people are hungry. The lady with the issue of blood, she went out and she moved out from her place of her comfort where they said, don't come outside. That's what the devil says. Don't go outside. No, you can't be in this part of the community you can't do what you can't do what society says you're bleeding you can't be in public but she said she pressed through the government she pressed through the crowd to get to where jesus was and got to where the garment was and touches touches garment she was made healed she was made whole and so there's things we have to press through in our life you've got to press through in your life you got to press through beyond the sleepers in your eyes you got to press through beyond the depression you got to press through beyond the, the discouragement. Yeah. Press through beyond the financial turmoil. Yeah. Press through the, the, the your own past, of your own thoughts of your life. Yeah. Press through those things and arise above. How do you press through? You put the Word of God on the inside. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You put it on the inside. You listen to it. Sometimes you're so jacked up in life that you need a whole lot of heap. Of, you need a forklift of, of teaching. Amen? Yeah. You need a whole forklift truck to come in full of the Word of God, full of the Spirit of God, because it takes three things. It takes the Word of God. The word, the, the spoken word of God, 
that you are reading yourself, that you're hearing, you're listening to, and it takes also the worship of the Lord. You have to come in. You put yourself aside. You've got to worship the Lord. But then it also, also takes the, your confession of faith. You have to be involved yourself and say, I agree with what I've received, and I'm going to speak it and take it in Jesus' name. Amen. And then you want to pray in the Holy Ghost to top it off. Stir the soup up and say, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you stir yourself up. That's how you stir yourself up. I read the word. Of, you might feel terrible today, but you take the word of God and you say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. At it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I might feel messed up. I might not have direction. You might have this depression. But then you put on the, your worship that you like to put on. I might put on worship in Spanish. You might put it on in Japanese. I don't know whatever your language is. And I'll listen to the worship. And I'll rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. And then you start to say, glory to God. The Lord's working in me. Something's working. The Holy Ghost is moving. Because the, the Spirit of God moves on the Word. So as you're receiving the Word, you're listening to the Word, the teaching of the Word, then you need to speak it. You need to receive it. You need to say it. I take it. That's what a Pentecostal person does. Does That's what a non-American church person does. Welcome to the non-American church that you're here today. I don't want to be like any other church out there. I want to be like the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. What he's doing today, he's lit a fire down on the inside to cause you to go evangelize, to get out beyond yourself, to say, I'm going to speak to people, invite them into Jesus. Hallelujah. We're not going to be a church that's defeated. You're not going to be a church person that's defeated. We're building the building, biggest buildings in this city. You're going to have the biggest crusades in Buffalo. If you want to go and do something that's not, not um, involving Jesus, then God bless you. Don't let the door hit you or the good Lord split you. Okay? If you want to come back in, you can come back into church. But guess what? We're going forward. Whoever wants to stay behind, whoever doesn't want to come, then don't come in Jesus' name. But the Lord wants you to come along. He wants you to be a part. He says, I love you. I've got mercy for you. I've got grace for you. So he's saying, come along because the day is good. Hallelujah. He's got good stuff. See, he's got good. He's got good for me. He's got good for you. Hallelujah. So as surely as I'll, I'll preach to myself in prayer, and I'll preach to you if you listen too. Amen? So that's what I do. As I pray, as I go around Buffalo, I'm speaking, Clarence is receiving Jesus. Yes. Williamsville is receiving Jesus. Amen. People are coming to the Lord. I don't care if I have an outreach and everybody says, screw you. Well, I'm going to say, Jesus is Lord. Well, then I'm talking, I'm being real here, folks. You hear a lot worse than that, don't you? Amen. And so they could say, I've had people say, no, I don't want that. I said, well, you're going to need it. Yeah. You're going to need it, pal. Just remember, as you're dying and the claws of death are coming down in your face, and if you feel the clammy hands of the hell, they grab a hold of you to pull you into hell, just remember when you speak the name of Jesus, then who says, whoever calls in the name of the Lord will be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. So this isn't a joke. It's not just a fun time. I love the fun of God, but I love to work hard. I love to have people receive the word and say, I'm going to take it and run with it. Anything we do in the flesh, any little about this is the huge deception of the last days we're yeah. living in, folks. Yeah. And that the deception is everything else is taking my time. It's so fun. People love me. These are my family. No, the church is your family. Yeah. If you're with another family that's, that's a, a, a family anywhere else, you do have, surely we have associations and things we do. But the closest family we should have is our church family. Yeah. Yeah. If we're not around them much, then they really ain't your church family. You're saying, my family is the family of Satan. Because that's the one I've spent the most time with. So who do you want to be the family with today? The Lord is inviting you. He's calling you to be part of the family of God. Amen. Amen. And you guys are the ones here that says, I chose the family of God. Amen. Amen. But, you want to, but I, I encourage you, admonish you today, and pull the people in because the Lord is bringing you on a journey. Not, not at Natty Gann, but the journey of the last days. Yeah. So get ready for the last days cart. It's moving on in. Yeah. Good things are happening. Amen. And when you walk with the Lord, he's walking with you. That's right. Ancient Chinese proverbs say, he who no walk with the Lord, no walk, he no walk with you. <laughs> so that's just when I'm in someone, whenever I say those people are like, oh, that's an ancient Chinese proverb. No, I just made it up. It's not, <laughs> it sounds like one though, doesn't it? Fortune cookie. So, but it's true anyways, isn't it? As Brother Hagin would always say, it's true anyways. <laughs> and so, praise God. Have you ever wondered how the blessing of God works in our life? It's very easy. We follow his instruction, right? Yeah. We follow his instruction. We put one foot after another. Yeah. Uh, does it all work out today? Do I suddenly look like Magnum P.I. and have a Ferrari, red Ferrari, by two weeks from now? No. It's not saying that. That may, that may or may not happen for you. 
But guess what? You're going to have blessing that's going to come on your life. It means that things aren't going to fall apart all the time in your life. And if it did, then say, thank God anyhow. And I'm Amen. moving forward in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. So number one, what is tithing? Yeah, we actually made it to number one here. So the, <laughs> so the, the, the main text today, Proverbs 3, 9, and 10, I was going to cap this off because I didn't talk about the New Testament and tithing. We, we brought you through the Old Testament. You saw Abraham, saw things in tithing. But the Lord is it in the New Testament as well. Some people said that there ain't no tithing in the New Testament. Well, you ain't ever read the Bible because there's tithing in the New Testament, son. And so there is. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your bats will overflow with new wine. So I honor the Lord with all my possessions. Hallelujah. Amen. And the first fruits of all my increase. That's the first fruits of your tithes. So your barns, what happens here? There's, there's a reciprocal. There's a boomerang that comes back to you. When you're giving to the Lord, he's not a Grinch. He's not a Scrooge. No. He says that your barns will be filled with plenty. You're going to have... You're gonna have but not, every time I say that to Eddie, he gets extra on yours. You get you get a <laughs> multiplication of, of, of equipment, amen, of stuff, amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But maybe he needs more equipment. Who knows? So guess what God is Jeff's like, no. <laughs> no. So... So God fills our barns with plenty. Our vats overflow with new wine. Hallelujah. You're overflowing with new, good good stuff and new. So what is tithing? Tithing is the Hebrew word masar, meaning the one-tenth part of something given. The word tithe simply means one-tenth. And this isn't what I said. This isn't what just the church came up with. This isn't just so you can give to the church so, so we can uh, have money for the church only. No, it's for your blessing. But it's, it's, for the, it's because this is taught in the Bible. We're, as pastors, responsible to teach the whole counsel of the Word of God. Yeah. And, we're, and that my, that our, we have to watch out for your souls, the Bible says. We have to watch out for your souls. If your soul be going to hell, then we're going to be after it like a rat on a Cheeto. Yeah. And I'm going to be praying over you. I'm going to be going over and talking to you. I'm going to bring you out to dinner and say, well, son, you know, this, you're not on a good path. Satan got a hold of your garment, son. Let's go ahead and turn this, turn this tide around. Amen. He might not be there yet, but he's got he's got a good he's got his teeth right down on your toe. So let's get you pulled back out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And so to the time it simply means one tenth. In Hebrew, point in Greek, it says the numeric of ten represents completeness. Isn't that interesting? Completeness. One tenth is completeness. And so meaning the tenth symbolizes giving one's all to God. And so it's a complete we're giving one's all to God. That's what's expected of us. And that's, that's not a lot. Really, it's not a lot. If the Lord gave his whole life for us, that's not a lot. Yeah. Master, which means tithe, makes you rich. It's the key to the protection for your blessings. Amen. There's a divine protection. It's better than Prudential, the big iceberg you see on the commercial. It's better than Allstate. It's better than State Farm. State Farm is there. Amen. It's better than, <laughs> it's better, better than the guy with the red shirt and the khaki pants. State Farm is there. You see, like, especially football time of the year. State, State Farm is there. Bing. Then there's a guy there. Well, guess what? The Lord's always with you. You're a tither. The Lord's always with you. He's better than a State Farm agent because, thank God, that angels aren't wearing a red shirt and khaki pants, right? They, they're supernatural beings that are protecting your stuff. Say they're protecting me. They're protecting, protecting my stuff. Protecting my Hallelujah. They're giving you blessings. Amen. They're speaking to people to cause deals and favor to come your way. Tithe means tens. Not it's not less than ten percent. That's not tithing. So you might have you might have done a good effort to get that direction. Start with something. Like I somebody said, start with something. If you start with one paycheck, say I'm going to start. I'm going to tithe off this one paycheck, and I'm going to put God to the test. I'm going to prove God in here in this. It says that He Malachi three ten. Prove me now in this. Says the Lord of hosts, if I'll not open you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing, there's not room enough to receive it. Amen. You might have felt like you didn't get hit by a dump truck, truck truckload of money when you actually after you did that, but guess what? It's the blessing you got all the way around in your life. Amen. It's blessing. Tithing is not a new or outdated principle. Built, it's built on the foundation of the Old Testament, as we talked about. The blessing Lord is beyond financial. It's a blessing in our lives. It's over our family, over our kids, over our mind, over our health. That you know what you don't have to go squirrely by the age of, of forty-five. Like well, Amen. you know you don't have to you don't have to lose your whole life within sixty years. And guess what? If you've had problems in your life, you've had the past that's happened. I, I dare say everybody's had things they wish didn't happen in their life, right? Sure. But guess what? God wants to turn those around. Yeah. Don't hold on to those things and say God didn't love me. I tied then, and so the, the Lord didn't mean it. He didn't do anything for me. No, 
And just because a church failed you, just because a person failed you, Jesus never fails you. He never failed you. He still saved you. He's still bringing you to heaven when you receive him as Lord and Savior, when you're walking with him. Amen? Amen. And so, so the Lord doesn't let us down. So don't look at past failures, past wrongs, and hold it against the Lord. I would never want to hold something against the Lord. The Lord is perfect and has done everything perfect for you. And so we need to do everything we can do for him. Amen? Amen. It's we owe, we, I owe my whole life to him. You owe your whole life to him too. Every single part of it. Whether you think this, you know, we're, we all feel okay and justified in our American culture to think that I can do it, have it my way. I wake up with a king, go to Burger King every day. I get my, my little, not happy meal, I get my Burger King meal. You might feel like you're good to go, that you got the commercial music playing in your, your mind. You're like, this is great, it's a sunny day, it's summertime, I'm waking up with a king, I got my burger. No, but there's, there's, there's a life that God expects of us, that he's, the Lord is very different than the American culture. Yeah. Very different. He's, he, is, he is strong, he's very strong, he's very pers uh, persistent, he has a strong will for you, but he expects a lot of you. Yeah. He expects a lot of us as Christians, not a lazy Christian mentality. Yeah. If we look at the, the Eastern uh, people and traditions, that they're very strong and staunch on what they do and how they live. And so we need to, to step it up a notch and not let people put us to shame. Not let the Old Testament folks say, just like David... He, he took a bear out of a, the mouth of a, he took a, the, the, lamb. took the lamb out of the mouth. Thank you. Help me. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> took, the, took the lamb out of the mouth of a bear. Uh, took the a lamb out of, away from a, a, a lion and several bears, several lions at least. And so, and also Goliath. And so what did he do? He was with the Lord. Amen. When you're with the Lord, the Lord calls you to great things. Amen. Hallelujah. So I got another picture here. It's about a farm down on the farm. And so, look at this. This farm was planted. A farmer had to plant the crops. They had to spread the seed. They had to, they had to contend with the seed. They had to water it. They had to irrigate it. They had to fertilize it. Then they had to reap the harvest. But look at all that's planted. There wasn't just one tomato plant planted with maybe get 20 to 60 to 100 tomatoes. No, there's many plants planted to reap a huge crop that comes in. So what we're planting in our life, what we're sowing into the kingdom of God, we're going to reap in Jesus' name. You, you're not going to see it all on earth. You're going to see it in heaven and for eternity. Guess what? Eternity is a long time. You ever thought about that? Yeah. We're here 80, 80 years plus in this earth, 90, 100 years, 112, whatever. And so you're here for a good chunk of time. But, but there's eternity with the Lord. What we do now on earth is going to mean for eternity what we're going to do. And so uh, he goes to prepare a place for us. He doesn't guarantee a mansion for you. And so he has many mansions, but he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And so, but number one, we want to, we're thankful to get to heaven, but you know what? I want to do all I can to bring people to the Lord. Don't you? Yeah. So Proverbs 11, 24 through 25 says, there's one who scatters yet increases more. And there's one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. If you're withholding from God, it's going to lead to poverty in your life. It may not show up today, but you're going to have a poverty mindset, a poverty lifestyle. You're not going to be truly successful because you're not getting any rewards from the Lord. The Lord is not is not going to honor you. You're not going to honor that, and you're not going to excel and go forward further with the Lord if you're not if you're robbing from Him. And we're not we're not not blessing the Lord. Amen? Amen. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Amen. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters what giving will be watered, blessed himself, just like the testimony of had. She was giving, and she was blessed herself. And so, you know, this is not a reprimand of people. This is just simply, uh, you know. A, a, a joy to say that I have direction in my life. The Lord has given me direction to help me out. Amen. That as you as you're a kid, when you grow up, your parents are like, "Hey, don't play with rattlesnakes, son. It's going to bite you. It might hurt. It might leave a mark. It might lose your life." And so they they help you to guide you, your parents, when you grow up. Or if you didn't have any that did, then praise God, you can have mentors around you to help you. Amen. That's why the church is men's groups, women's groups to help people forward in life in Jesus' name. So number two, we're committed with our whole heart to God. So we might think, well, the Lord's good. He just takes care of me. I don't need to do anything. I'm just going to, you know, I'm entitled to everything. The Lord doesn't, he doesn't care what I do, what, what happens. No, but we have, we have to follow him. There, the, everything in the word of God is conditional. There's a part to play. God expects obedience in our life. 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 9 says, I planted, Paul said this, I planted, Apollos watered another, um, another minister, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. 
Now he who plants and he who waters are one. It means they're both doing the work, right? You're planting, there's another farmer that's coming through and watering. They're both working in the harvest field. You're both working. So when you're in when you're working in the church, you're serving, you're both, you're all working in the ministry. Yeah. Amen. You're working in the ministry. And it says, each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Do you get that? Each one will receive his own reward according to his labor. If we're not laboring for God, we're not sowing, then you're not going to be reaping. You're not going to receive rewards from the Lord. You know, so there is a reward from the Lord, both here and in heaven. I want to be, I want the Lord to be pleased and say, wow, that's, you've been working hard, not just to store up stuff, but to say that you really love me and you really honor me. There is a proving of our heart to the Lord. Amen. Amen. There is a proving of our life to the Lord. And so Second Chronicles 16, 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of those whose hearts are loyal to him. Are our hearts loyal to him? Does he have my whole heart? Do I think of him first in what my week holds? Do I think of him first in what I'm doing in my life? Do I have everything else lined up? Then if I have time to go to church, I go to church? Or do I have time to go evangelize? Or do I have time to stop and tell somebody in the street that Jesus loves you? Just take that extra minute out of my way that's inconvenient for me to go ahead and send a text to somebody and encourage them in the day. Trust me, I'm very busy. And you're very busy too. I know you are. But guess what? When you stop, maybe sleep a half hour less, 15 minutes less, you'll survive. You'll survive. I got three hours of sleep the other night. I got four hours last night. I survived. I'm still alive today. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. He's got strength for you, unparalleled strength. Let me tell you what, when you walk with Jesus, he's got such a strength that he's going to pour into your life that you'll never be the same. He wants to open up the floodgates of understanding so you know what to do. Yeah. He's going to start to put upon you understanding, wisdom, insight into your life. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Daniel 11.32b says, But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Who does it say? The people who heard about God know. The people who know their God. You, don't, you want to know why I can go minister to somebody? Because I know the Lord. Yeah. He puts a boldness in me. I know my Father. I walk with him. I know him. I know his voice. Yeah. How can I go minister the gifts of the Spirit to somebody that says, hey, stand up in the name of Jesus. The power of God's come upon your leg. Your leg's healed in the name of Jesus. And I allow that power of God to flow through me into that person. They're made well. Is it me who did? No. It's because I know the Lord, the one who's the, the power of one, yeah. right? Amen. And so he's gonna, he wants to work with you. But you've got to take time to know him. Take time to know him in the word. Spend that time and treasure his word like you are today. You're treasuring his word. Amen. Hallelujah. So praise the Lord. So Jesus told his disciples, come and follow him, follow him. They left their families, their fishing businesses, tax collector jobs. They followed him. They left all and they followed him. You know, he didn't call everybody to fivefold ministry, but he says, what can we do to set aside our time, our life to follow him with our whole hearts? So this is all about tithing. This is all about giving. It's, it's my whole life is his. If he says, hey, I'll bring a tenth, then it's easy to provide a tenth. And then I also, beyond that, do the giving and blessing to the ministry as well. Amen. We tithe personally. Our church tithes. This church tithes. Amen. To ministries. Amen. And, and as a result, this church is blessed. We're blessed. And you're, you're receiving the blessing of the Lord by being under a church that gives. Amen. Amen. A church that tithes. So I love this. I just want to open up your understanding to see the, of what the Lord, how the Lord wants us to think as a church. Um, I was listening to teaching Reverend Jonathan Shuttlesworth shared the story. He shared a story about how he was with a group of ministers and they were all saying all the bad experiences they had with them um, in ministry when they were out preaching and teaching that they were not blessed in certain ways in certain places they went to that they, uh, you know, one guy had to go sleep in a nursery of uh, the church and had to get ready in the church shower or something like that. And cause they didn't put them up in a hotel and other persons they put up in a bad hotel. And so he's thinking to himself, he's like, trying to think of, man, is there any bad story I really have that says I've been on the road, you know, teaching and tra traveling and preaching. And he, he's thinking to himself, at first he's thinking, you know, I can't think of anything really bad that's happened in my life, amen. But then the Lord says, don't get on that wagon with them because by their own words, it's causing themselves to, to yeah. fall out of line with the blessing of God in their yeah. life. Yeah. And so he, he, he actually remembered a story what happened earlier on in ministry for him is he went to this one church and uh, they, he followed the GPS to get there, uh, to go to this hotel as a four-star hotel. And he gets there and he's like, this can't be the hotel. You know, this is like this way amazing hotel. And 
And then so he checks with the checks with the check in. They said, yeah, we have your name here. And then so he asked the pastor when he sees the pastor later on, he's like, hey, did you guys mean to put me in the hotel? Or did you know this was me coming? Because he's like, I've got my dad, Tiff Shuttlesworth. I've got my uncle, uh, 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 Ted Shuttlesworth. I've got my other uncle, Shuttlesworth. I've got these people. They're all amazing, amazing ministers that are in ministry. Did you really think it was them or something and not me? They said, no, we knew it was you. We wanted you to be here. And he says, normally we don't put people up in this uh, uh, big of a, a place, this nice of a place. But he said, the youth actually want to do something. They raise money. Praise God. So what a, what a vision for the youth. The youth did two car washes to raise money to put them up in an amazing wow. place. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. What a blessing. And so the youth caught the vision to say, we want to bless this traveling minister. That's Praise God. So amazing. So that's the blessing. That's the blessing series is all about. It's And so does it mean that this, this traveling minister gets to be blessed and know they're a hot shot? No, it's because you're honoring God's people. Yeah. The people that are coming. When we have guest ministers come in, we want to honor them when they're coming in. We honor them as if Jesus is coming. Amen. We honor them and say, you are such a blessing. You travel all over the world. You're not sleeping in your, your home tonight. You're leaving your comforts. You're traveling to come and carry the word of God to us. The riches of the word of God. There's nothing better and bigger and more important than the word of God delivered. The Queen of Sheba traveled many, many, many thousands of miles to come and hear from Solomon. Amen. The wisdom of God from Solomon. So we will want to tend to, to listen to with all of our hearts to, to tune in to hear the word of the Lord. Just like Jesus told Martha and Mary, said, said, Martha, Martha, you're troubled with much serving. Yeah. Mary, you've chosen the better thing to sit and yeah. listen, listen to what I'm saying to you. Amen. We want to serve. It's important to serve, but the Lord wants you to listen to his word, to listen to what he's saying. What is he saying to you today? What can we correct in our lives today? He's talking to us, I guarantee. Yes. He's talking to us. Pray for the people of Buffalo. Pray for New York State that it's going to be torn out of hell to come to Jesus because yeah. the only time is short. There's only so much time in everybody's life, right? Yeah. So, hey, the New Testament root of tithing and blessed church of church today. Everybody got a couple more minutes? Yep. Yeah. Amen. Well, I'm going anyway, so. <laughs> You've got this. We've got this. The Lord's got this. So the New Testament root of tithing. Luke 16, 11 says, who can... Whoever can be trusted with very little can also can be trusted with much. Whoever is dishonest with very little will be dishonest with much. And so the Lord isn't going to trust a thief to, to have the riches of, of God in your life. Obviously, there's Judas Iscariot. There was a thief that was right with him. But he went hung himself, you know. He, he, his end didn't work out well, you know, and the Lord knew it. But the Lord, the Lord wants to, he will entrust you with more when you're, you bless him, when you, when you are able to be trusted. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But sometimes we go around the same mountains in life. We don't excel and don't grow, go onward with God because we, don't, we aren't able to be trusted by the Lord. And it, it, a big part of our trusting comes in our finances. And so this is and it's in every area of our life. We can, we can improve better. Our, is everybody a master in finances? Is everybody like master investors? Not everybody's a master investor. We could always do better. Amen. But we can move forward. But it starts with the first thing of tithes. Matthew 23, 23, Jesus said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin, and have neglected the weighty matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. So he said, your tithing of tithing exact and what you received is correct. But you said you should not have left the other things undone of law, of justice and mercy. Those are weightier things. But you should not have left undone, which you did not, the tithes. Jesus said it, out of the mouth of Jesus. If you want to want to argue with Jesus, go ahead and talk to him. Don't argue with me, argue with the Lord. It's not gonna it's not gonna go too well. I'll tell you that discussion. It ain't gonna go too well. Uh, I just don't tell me when you go to go talk to him, I'll just leave the room right then. Okay? So Hebrews seven, and we say this with all love and understanding, that we're here to train. We're here to, to bring education, right? Yeah. To get grown up in the word. And I love to hear the word and receive the word because what happens when you receive the word, you receive faith. Faith is the ability to receive what has been spoken. You, then you're able to go do it. You're empowered to go do it. Amen? So we triple dog dairy, as we would say. Hebrews 7.1 says, For this, this Melchizedek, king of Salem, and this is kind of like a brief overview of what we talked about for the Old Testament tithing. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness and then also king of Salem. 
meaning king of peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, with having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like in the Son of God, remaining a priest continually. So saying that Melchizedek was Jesus. Amen. Melchizedek was Jesus as an example, that he had no beginning or end. That's the only one that has that is Jesus. So Abraham tied it all to, to Melchizedek. Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils, and indeed that those who are of the sons of Levi, who received the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law that is from their brethren. Now let's skip down to verse uh, 8. Here mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them, of whom it is witnessed he lives forever. And so some people have concerns about tithing to the church. What is the church going to do with my money? What they're going to take it? They're going to rob it? Oh, I think Pastor Kevin had a Benz. Was he? Did he have that? Did he have that? Did he have that person? No, he had a Bentley. That's what it was. He was driving a Bentley. He had, the, he had a spinning hubcap, spinning ribs, ground effects going on down there. He was. He was like. He was. I swear that was him. He was downtown. He was driving a Bentley. Well, who cares if I had a Bentley, right? Number one, I don't want a Bentley to get dented driving around because I have to pay $50 million to have it repaired, right? And so I just thank you very much. You can keep your Bentley. If you give it to me, I'll just go ahead and turn it back and sell it, you know? And so, so but, you know, it's, it's not what we have, what has us, right? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's, 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 that's why there's accountability in the church. We have pastors that are over us, our pastor, John and Lisa Carter. Uh, we have uh, CPA that are over us that oversee all of our stuff, look through all of our stuff. We have attorneys, two sets of attorneys that are over us as well. We have a board that's over us. Yeah. Reverend Stephanie is coming. She's on our board. Yeah. Amen. And so people, we have a budget that we're accountable to and for all that we do, incoming, outgoing, expectation. And so there's a lot, right? And so even as, as the size we are right now, that's growing bigger all the time. Amen. Yes. And people are coming back. They went out. Some a lot of people went out to the to, to flow out to the on the rafts of the, the the water today. But they're just floating back in as the tide comes in. In Jesus' name, we receive you, Amen. amen. And so, however, uh, guess what? When you're giving, you're going to be blessed, amen? amen. I love it. I love to give. Paul Paul said in Philippians four fifteen, he said, "This is a principle of giving and receiving in the New Testament." And so, this whole and I'll touch on this briefly here. And then we'll hit the whole overview of this real quick. Like I said, we're on a journey today. You're on a journey. How, you didn't even know you're on a journey today. You're on a journey today through the New Testament and tithing. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. Philippians 4.15 says, uh, Now you Philippians, Paul's saying this, Now you Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving or receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent one aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. He's saying, I'm not just trying to get money from you. He says, I want you to be blessed. He said, indeed, I have all and abound. I am full. I have been received from Epaphroditus. That's the guy who gave, gave him, who supported him. The things sent from you, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. So when you give... It's a sweet smelling aroma. It's acceptable to God. When you're giving your tithes, he says, when you're giving and supporting missions and ministries, it says it goes up as a sacrifice to God. He's like, wow, what's that smell? It's a, it's a sweet smelling sacrifice. In the Old Testament, they sacrificed goats and turtle doves and all kinds of stuff and grain offerings. In the New Testament, we sacrifice with our lives we give. We sacrifice with our worship. We sacrifice with our finances. And it goes up a sweet-smelling savor. They say, wow, somebody has given tithes today. Wow, that, that Francisco, he's tithed and given his offerings to the Lord to, to me today. I've seen that. I've smelt that. It's, been, it's an aroma to me. And God, my, he says, and my God, who's, who's, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So he's saying to the people, this church that was giving, that was sharing with giving and receiving, this is the church that he says, I'm going to supply your needs. God's going to supply your needs. We can't skip to verse 19 and say, I've never given, and God's going to supply my needs. Because you're not qualifying yourself to be, have your needs supplied. You have to qualify yourself. Just like I get qualified for a track meet, if I can run so fast in the track meet, great, you're qualified for the 500. You're qualified for the shot put. You try to do shot put and you drop it behind you and hit somebody with a shot put, you ain't going to go out in the shot foot field, field son. That ain't going to happen. You try to do the standing long jump and you just fall over into the sand pit, then guess what? You're not going to go ahead and be asked to do that. They say, we have a better event for you. How about getting water for the people that are out of the field today? Okay. And so verse 15, and what he's talking about says, this is 
concerning giving and receiving. This literally means the word, the message, the doctrine of receiving, the doctrine of giving. This is the doctrine of, of giving and receiving that Paul was establishing. Jesus already gave his best, didn't he? And he's the harvest of that, off of that his giving is us. Amen. That he, this, we're the harvest off of his giving. So Paul taught this giving and receiving. He said, I seek fruit that abounds to your account. I'm not just seeking to get money from you. He says, I want fruit to abound to you. Amen. Doesn't the Bible say that when we give, we receive good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, men giving our bosom? Yes. Amen. We see it. People are going to chase you down. Stuff's going to come your way. Job increase is going to come your way. Blessing are going to come your way. Yes. You're going to feel better mentally. You're going to feel joyful. Isn't it wonderful when you can give to people? You buy a coffee for somebody. They're, they're like, wow, that made my day. Yes. That's a blessing. Amen. That's a blessing. I love to give. Don't you love to give like that? Yes. So praise God. He's calling. So he calls this a sweet smelling savor. Money's not evil. The world tries to say, oh, those evil preachers, those evil churches are trying to take their money. Well, we're called a nonprofit for a reason. We're not trying to get the, we're trying to get, you know, the biggest, baddest, baddest, worst, whatever. No, think of this too, that a church has a great building, great facilities. You can put up those pictures of the, the buildings real quick if you got them. So say this is a church building that we're gonna, that we look at getting just for, just for saying sake, I'm not, this is not a real deal for me, but these are real buildings online that, uh, a couple buildings like 10,000 square feet, 30,000 square feet. These things cost a lot of money to get. They cost a lot of money to a 30,000 square foot building is about 7.5 million to purchase. Uh, the cost to build in New York is $240 to $1,270 per square foot between here to New York City and the prices fluctuate. So it's 2.4 million to 12.7 million to build a building of 10,000 square feet. Something like this. It's like, it's gonna cost like 2.4 million to 12.7 million. That's not that's not ten dollars, you know. And so when you're going, if you're saying, you know what, I want to support the ministry and getting the word out, the gospel out. I've been blessed by the word, and I want others to be blessed by the word. I want people to have air conditioning and not sit under a tent in the snows of December. Amen. How many of you like to sit under a tent in the snow in December? Unless you're out there going to go skiing, I don't care to do that. Okay. I want to be inside where it's warm. Amen. And the facilities, operational cost, and maintenance to repair some buildings can cost for like a building that's like a 30,000 square foot building can cost 315,000 annually, yeah. 315,000 annually. I used to be a facilities manager, construction project manager for a property, the Pastor Mark and Janice actually, they had like 13 acres, four buildings in their property. And I've managed the construction projects, the oversight of all the contractors. There's a lot of money flowing and going all over the place to keep things looking excellent. The Lord told Brother Hagin, as he said, I expect my people at the best place in town to meet in. Do you want to have flipping Turning Stone Casino or the River Casino be the best place in town to meet in? Heck no. We don't want to have that. Do you want? Do we really want to the casinos to be the best places? Oh, I can't wait to go to the casino. It's exciting. It's bright. It's joyful. Oh, what a wonderful thing. It's a distraction. The devil's causing all these lights, these smoke and mirrors to send you straight to hell to lose your money. To lose your money. I'm not saying if somebody played the, pulled the little jingle, jingle, jingle one time you're going to hell. No, but if he wants to distract you out from the things of God, yeah. that's not the best. I would, like I said, I'd rather invest in a cup of coffee uh, and just take the chance of that than play the lottery, right? Yeah. And so, well, this can be a good or a bad cup of coffee. We'll find out, right? And so, but the Lord wants you to have the best place. He wants you to have the best. Amen. Amen. It's a lie of the devil to think that he wants you to have the worst. It's not for the sake of the stuff. It's for the sake of reaching the people. We got another. We did have the picture of the Crusades, which we've shown. Shown picture of the Crusades. Well, that's the outreach we did. Uh, we did this. This is. We weren't at this one, but we were um, at the same place. So Buffalo Dream Center. They've got a big warehouse. We went, and a lot of you guys came. Yeah. Really, we probably had eighty percent of the church came out for it. Props to you all. Amazing, amazing. We love it. We love you guys. That you came out there to to help to bag groceries. How many would do a thousand bags or something? Yeah, yeah. I think nine hundred and ninety bags or something. Yeah. That was a lot of groceries. You know, you worked up a ladder. The kids were <laughs> the kids kids were sweating, right? And so I was sweating. I was like, man, thank God this is only we're about done. And so we got them all bagged up, and uh, they were able to do the outreach during the week. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. So what what does the money go through for the church? It goes through to do, was that, we did have to, we have to pay for it? We didn't have to pay for it. But guess what? We as a church are able to give money so they can buy the yeah, groceries. We give them a check. We give them a check. Yeah. And so we want the people of Buffalo to be fed. You're part of 
helping feed people. The Lord wants you to be a blessing to the people of God. Amen. And so God is good. So praise the Lord. God is faithful. He's working in your life. Say he's working in my life. In my life. Hallelujah. So just an overview here as far as what tithing is. Tithing is all that comes into us, God, is ultimately God's, right? You know, that I say, Lord, if you want me to give an offering today, if I have it, he's not saying what you don't have. If I have, if I don't have $100,000, I can't give it. I can't give it, right? If you have 50 bucks and he's like, you just got it, and he's like, you can give it, then, and he's encouraging, he said, hey, you should give that to the missions team, to the missions group. Then guess what? As you give it, you're going to be blessed. So we're, we don't tithe like we're paying a bill. Well, there goes the 10% to the Lord, hoping have something happens with it. You know, no. It's out of obedience to him. We're returning to the Lord. We're returning to the Lord that 10%. Amen? Amen. We tithe off of all the increase that comes in. Every bonus I get, every sale, of special sale I get, even gift cards I get, you might say, well, you're excessive. Well, I like to excessively love the Lord. Yeah. Amen. I like to excessively tithe according to what he's directed me to do. So we bring it also to the house of the Lord. Just like we talked about the Old Testament, that Jacob, he said, this is called the house of the Lord, where their angels were descending and ascending from heaven. On Jacob's ladder, it was called. And that was called the house of God. There he began to tithe. Amen. And so we give to the house of the Lord. We do. Amen. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just go ahead and stand up today as we close out in prayer. Amen. And so, you know, it costs for like a crusade. I was going to tell you that. So one of these evangelistic crusades, you know, they could cost anywhere from $20,000 for a small one that like April and Joel might do. They would have a few hundred people that come to it. And they have more than that at times. Or a million dollars for a crusade, Right. A million dollars to do like one of those big crusades we saw. Uh, we even heard of the one that was uh, Pastor Rodney. He just did one in, in London, uh, and they had London, England, and theirs theirs cost how much? Four point three million to do a week of meetings in London. Four point three million, and they they had forty six thousand people saved that week. So they and they need it big time, man. I've been to London. I've been there. They need like a West Texas uh, slap in the face. So, amen. And New York needs it too. And so we're going to have those as well, but it doesn't cost nothing. So if you want to get involved with what Jesus, you can put the music on. If you want to get involved with what Jesus is doing, amen. I know, I know about you, but I love the Lord. I love to do, let me tell you, I've been a part of those big meetings in, in, in Hermosillo, Mexico. We've been there to do missions meetings. I've been to South America. I've been to Europe. I've been to Central America. I've been to different places. God wants to take you either by your giving, by your going, by your praying, to make a change in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's pray today. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. We thank you for this grand vision that you put inside of us. We thank you, you put a grand vision. Hallelujah. Grand vision. You put a fire in the inside, Father. Lord, I pray, Father God, that the fire of God would come upon the people of Life Worship Church here and the ones that are watching today. Oh, we pray for healing for those that are out, that are sick, Father, some that are not feeling well today. We pray and we send forth a word of healing, just like the centurion servant didn't even show up because they couldn't. But the centurion came on behalf of them and they said, only in my word, only in your word, just speak the word only and my servant will be healed. So, Lord God, we say we speak the word, be healed in the name of Jesus. If you're at home and you're sick, put your hand in yourself in the name of Jesus. We speak the life of God to flow in your body, quicken your mortal body. Lift up your hands and start to say, glory to God, I'm healed. I'm healed of the Lord, healed from mental torments. In Jesus' name they go. Confusion goes. Sickness goes. Fear goes. Be free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Devil, stop oppressing the people. Get off their lives in Jesus' name. Get off their lives in Jesus' name. And so, Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We, we give with our whole heart. We are so excited for the people of God here and the testimonies that they have. We're so excited that they're going to step up a notch to walk with you. They're, you're looking. You said your eyes are running to and fro throughout the whole earth. Who can I show myself strong on the behalf of them? Who is going to be loyal to me? Who is going to truly pay the price to live for me? Who is going to go with me? Surrender all, the Lord says. Surrender all, and you're, not going to, you're never going to miss it. What you've surrendered, you're never going to miss. But when you give up all, you're going to gain all. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we thank you, Father God, that we're going to walk with you. We're going to talk with you. I'm so excited for the people of Buffalo to come to Jesus. Hallelujah. The people of New York, the people of the world are coming to Jesus. Because there's a revival 
in the in the church, they're being revived to realize I'm a son of God. I'm not a child of Satan. I don't like to hang out with the people of Satan more than I do the people of God. I like to hang out with the people of God. You choose this day who you'll serve. And who you serve, that choice is going to cause you to go with some will not even enter heaven. So you choose. Are you going to walk with him? Or are you going to not walk with him? Choose this day whom you'll serve. Heaven or hell. Jesus. Me and I choose. And I know you'd make the right choice. So I thank you, Father God, that this church is blessed. We pray, Lord God, that as people go, they have divine protection. Testimonies. 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 Testimonies of protection. Testimonies of divine provision. Lord God, there's swirlings going on in the world. There's things going on. There's political things going on. And we pray for those things. We sure do all week long. But Father God, there's something else that's bigger going on. It's called the kingdom of God. It's called Jesus is coming back. It's called there's a plan of God. It's because we're not filled with the distractions of what does this person say? What does that happen here? What happens there? Lord, we know what happens. We know some things that occur. We don't know the full picture of those things, but you know what's going on. You've called us to be sons and daughters of God, to fulfill the great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel. So we love you, Lord, and we say we're going to do it. Life Worship Church is doing it. We're going to fulfill the gospel. Whoever wants to come along, we're going. I'm going to fulfill the gospel. If it's me, myself, and I, and the few with me, then we're gonna we're gonna win by many, win by few, but we're gonna win the people of people in this city of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you say if you receive it now, say amen. Hallelujah.